As I mentioned before, this isn't the only way you can set up your model. And of course, you can do this by hand, like you can just write this out, do the equations, reach for your scientific calculator, all of that is fine. But it's really important that you learn how to do this stuff uh, and there's a real life lesson that comes out of this. I never got taught how to use this stuff to manage my own money when I was in year 12. And so what I'm hoping is that uh, this is a lesson for you guys and that you learn to just, like this is just a really valuable thing for you to do as an individual, okay? So let's have a look at this scenario. You are investing $30,000 over the course of 20 years into a retirement fund. So it's kind of like a superannuation type situation. And then you've got these three options, A, B, and C. If you look at them, and don't worry too much about the specific numbers. The idea here is, do you start off with a smaller investment, a smaller deposit each year, and then go to a bigger one? Or do you start off with a bigger one, then go to a smaller one? Or do you just kind of average it out and do the same amount all year, or every year, I should say, right? Which will be the best and by how much? Now, you'll notice no interest rate is specified. And that's because the interest rate doesn't really matter, right? Uh, I can go with the interest rate that I had at the beginning in my first question, 4.5%. You could do something like 3.5%, which is closer to what it currently is in our economy. You could do 10 just for the sake of illustration. I'm going to leave it as 4.5%. Now, you can see the only difference I've made to our model so far is uh, I've put in an extra row for deposit 2 right, so that I can change around the numbers and get the formulas to refer to the right thing. So I've got deposit one as, firstly, let's do scenario A. So that's $1,000 annually, and then all my numbers have crunched, which is nice, okay? So when you think about what happens for the next 10 years, I can't just copy and paste this down because something different is happening, right? So here comes deposit number two, so instead of $1,000, I'm going to put 2000 By the way, um, I showed you guys before that if you are up in the home tab and you press the, the dollar symbol, uh, it's tucked away in here, uh, one of the things it does is it puts like commas for you and makes it easier to read large numbers, right? So that's one of the reasons why people do it. Anyhow, I've got the $2,000. So starting from year 11, what happens differently? Well, it'll be very similar to what's going on here if I copy and paste this down, right? But instead, see what I've got there highlighted in red? I'm not going to add on deposit one. I'm going to add on deposit two. So what I need to do is take this uh, D dollar sign four and change it into a D dollar sign six. So you can see now it's referring to this new deposit amount. Everything else is the same. So I hit enter. You can see it's roughly right. And then I go to the end of the 20 years. So I've got this figure, 45,624, okay? So maybe I should just pop this down the bottom here uh, like I've shown you previously. I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna go values. This is A, option A, okay? So now what am I going to do? Well, I've got my model all set up, right? So all I need to do to see what happens in option B is to change my deposit one and my deposit two figures. So I'm going to switch this around. Here comes 2,000. And then here comes 1,000. And now compare what our final number is right there with what we got in scenario A. So you can see there's quite a difference, right? It's the same $30,000 that you've put in, like physically, like from your banking or whatever, right? But in scenario B, because we put a larger sum in earlier in time, we got, let's copy and paste it, uh, quite a bit more money. Let's paste the value. So what I've got here, I can do a difference. Bam, I made $7,100 difference, right? Which is a significant proportion of the extra value that we've got here, right? Uh, that looks to me like it's about, mm, it's, it's over 10%, over 15%. It's a big difference, okay? So now when we look at scenario C, I wonder what your instincts are, right? So this is going to be, I don't want the copyright sign. Uh, let's change that. No, nope, it's still the copyright side. It's time, whatever. Let's go to deposit one and deposit two. If I change them each to $1,500, you've got $49,000, which perhaps you predicted that that was going to be uh, partway between option A and option B. So the lesson here, right, is 
If you have the ability to do so, and if this is something you care about, having a bigger dollar sign in your investment by the end, then investing early, like tightening your belt and being able to get that money in the bank sooner rather than later, um, it has a significant advantage for you, right? Uh, this is a, a real thing to do in real life. People often don't think about the fact that it can make a significant difference like this. I only said $1,000 a year. Most people are going to put way more than $1,000 in, in a year um, into their bank account because the government requires employers to put a certain percentage in for superannuation. If you're earning a decent salary, $1,000 is, is right down the bottom. Okay. Final note to say, again, since I've given real life lessons is, I very briefly mentioned, let's change this back to the the best scenario, scenario B. I briefly mentioned, this is the way to do it. Put all the money in if this is the thing that you care about. But the lesson that we should take from present value is that having a nice number there, a big number in the future is good, but it isn't the only thing that should matter to you. Sometimes, say for example, you wanna start a business, it requires you to spend money early on and have less in your bank account so that you can, I don't know, own, own, not own, you could rent maybe um, a, a venue for your business or rent a van or equipment or hire people. That means this dollar sign might be less, but you actually are earning equity and you've got a business, you've got assets in other ways, okay? So think about the opportunity cost question as well.